went out of town for a whole month and I did not weigh myself for the entire month. So I wanted to tell you guys about my experience with that, um, how it turned out, good or bad, and the different factors that made it more difficult for me and the things that I did to try to counteract any negatives to kind of balance everything out. So hopefully you guys might find it helpful in case you're in that situation. So I actually came home weighing less than when I left after four weeks of no weighing. Um, that was a pleasant, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a surprise. It was a little surprising. I didn't really expect to weigh less. I thought that I might have been about the same weight or maybe just one or two pounds more. That's kind of what I was thinking when I came home, which I figured, you know, if I've gained a pound or two, that'll be very easy to correct. So I was okay with that. But as it turns out, I actually weighed about a pound less when I came home. When I left, I was around 125, 126. And when I came home, I was actually 124.4 the first morning back, and then the next day I was actually 123.8, and then yesterday I was actually, yesterday or a couple of days ago, I was 122.8, which is crazy. I don't know if it'll stay that low, but, um, but anyway, overall, obviously a total success, uh, which I'm very happy about. You know, some of you might wonder why I weigh myself frequently. A lot of HCGers, even once they're off of HCG, do continue to weigh every day or frequently. And um, I don't know that it's necessarily something that you have to do indefinitely forever. Um, but I do think that it can be very useful for a time because it's just a very useful feedback mechanism for you to know if what you're doing in day-to-day -day life is working for you or if it's not working for you. And after a while, if you get a really good feel for how your body does, you might be able to taper off the scale and, and just and know what's working for your body on your own. But it's kind of something that takes a little training, I think. And for most of us, you know, coming from a background of being overweight, we haven't often learned, we haven't learned that, you know, we haven't been able to, we haven't learned that. So I just view weighing as a feedback mechanism. For some people, it becomes an obsession um, that kind of dictates how their day will go and things like that. In that case, weighing may not be a good idea for you to do every day, but for me, it's very useful. It helps me decide what I'm gonna do um, as far as how I'm gonna eat in for the following day, you know? I might allow myself to have indulgences on some days if I'm doing well. If I find that the scale is up a little bit, then I will be stricter than usual for a few days. It's not a big deal, nothing that I get all freaked out about, but it just helps me to make you know, the choices that I'm gonna make so that I can keep an overall balance. So that's why I do weigh frequently. So it's been over a whole year now since I finished my last round of HCG. I have a one year anniversary video coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> I have all these little clips of stuff I wanna put into a video, but it's taking me a while to get around to it. Um, so, but anyway, during that time, I did weigh most days. There were periods of time where I skipped a day here and there, and there was even a few periods where I skipped weighing for like a whole week here and there, you know, and then I would check in again. Um, however, when I was gone for the whole month, I've, I've never not weighed for an entire month before. So full four weeks. I wish I could say that <laughs> there was something purposeful behind that, but honestly, it was just that there was literally no room in our luggage and I'm, I'm super frugal and I just didn't feel like spending $30 on something that I already had at home. Um, I figured if I really got antsy, you know, and just like really wanted to know, I could make like a midnight Walmart run. Um, so I always had that in the back of my head that I could do if I really wanted. Um, and just a little FYI, Never weigh yourself at night. Only weigh yourself once every morning. Don't weigh yourself multiple times a day. You you do weigh more at night after you've eaten and drank in fluids all day. Your your body weighs more at night. So that's you don't want to weigh yourself in the morning and then think you gained three pounds because you weigh three pounds more at night. So just FYI on that. So anyway, 
so it really just turned into this experiment. You know, I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna have to kind of judge by how my body feels and by the different food choices I make. Um, and it did feel a little bit like, you know, being blind, like, okay, it's just really hard to know. I don't know how I'm doing because I don't have that feedback from the scale. Um, but obviously it turned out good. So I'm gonna talk about first, the different factors that made it more difficult um, and then about the things that helped me to um, balance, balance things out so that I was able to come home the same size. So basically there was actually five different factors that kind of you could say maybe were negative factors as far as trying to maintain my weight. Uh, one was obviously having no scale. The second one was we ate at restaurants a lot more during the four weeks. Um, I didn't have as many productive things to do as usual, which for me is usually not a good thing. I was on antibiotics for two weeks and um, I had a lot more worse than usual days emotionally. While I was, while I was gone, it was actually for a medical treatment. Um, so I had some emotional days. And um, so I'm gonna talk about each of those. So the first one, not having a scale, for me, that just changes everything uh, because I don't have any number to help me decide if I'm eating too much or too little, you know, from day to day. I'm used to having that as a way to help me figure out if what I've been eating has been okay. As much as I'd like to say that I eat to hunger and I never overeat and I always make the perfect food choices, I'm just, I'm too human um, to be that perfect. So I, I do eat too many carbs some days. I do eat too much food on some days and get overly full. That does happen. And usually I would use the scale as an indicator of whether or not my doing that you know, requires that I make an adjustment in following days to correct it or not. Because some days, you know, if, if I haven't done that in a long time, the one-time indulgence is no big deal and it doesn't affect my body, in which case I don't have to correct anything. Um, but if, if I've done it maybe too often, then it will affect the scale, in which case I have to correct. So I didn't have that feedback for me to know. Um, sometimes you can use your clothes as a way to gauge that, but that's not always an accurate way for any HCGers who know when you lose fat on HCG, you tend to lose it um, fairly evenly and in places you didn't used to lose it. And then when you regain it, you sometimes regain it in other spots. So you may think, oh, well, my waist is still the same size, but you actually did gain weight, but it's in your thighs, you know? So, so that's not always the best indicator. So that made it harder. You know, I, I had to make judgments just based on the other factors that I knew. And it was just, it was a little more challenging. Um, the second thing is we did eat out at restaurants quite a bit more. We, we ate out probably at least three to four times a week, if not more. Um, I, at home, I pretty much eat only home cooked food most of the time. So, you know, restaurants are notorious for higher calories and higher carbs and higher fat, everything. I'm not against fat at all. I'm not against carbs. It's just that the combinations and somehow in restaurants is just so much more than you would normally eat usually. Um, so being that that's the case, I mean, for instance, we went to Thai restaurants because I love Thai food. <laughs> we went to Thai restaurants quite a few times while we were there. Um, I always got this gluten-free green curry, which does have sugar in the curry. I always got the side of white rice and I would eat the whole serving with the green curry because the curry is a little spicy and of course the rice helps with that. Um, so I did that quite a few times. I had a lot of like crab sushi from Whole Foods. I tried this Italian place that had like gluten-free, some gluten-free options. Um, unfortunately, the gluten-free pasta I tried tasted like dog food, which is a bummer because that was a huge waste of carbs that I could have, um, you know, enjoyed on something else. But anyway, so I ate that and kind of got full. Um, we went to like a steakhouse where the food itself was fairly healthy, but I got really full, like really full, um, uncomfortably full. So, you know, that didn't feel good. That's usually not a good thing. Uh, we went to a Mexican restaurant. This one was just my son and I. And I got off of corn the whole month that I was there. The doctor that I was seeing, he suggested that I remove corn as well, <laughs> in addition to everything else that I don't eat. And so I was like, okay, fine. Yeah, whatever is gonna make me feel better, 
I'll do it. So I took corn out uh, and for a whole month, you know, this now towards the end of the trip, we go to this Mexican restaurant, it's just my son and I, he's only four, and they put in front of me this huge basket of corn tortilla chips, like humongous. Uh, looking back, obviously the smart thing to do would have been to ask him to remove it, but I didn't. <laughs> and so I had no intention of eating any. I was just gonna get like some fajita thing and not eat the corn tortillas and just, you know, eat the vegetables and meat type thing. So as it turns out, I ended up eating my fajitas with the corn tortillas and the refried beans and guacamole. And I'm pretty sure I ate a 50% of that basket, definitely half of the chips. Um, and it was, it was just huge. Uh, I was definitely didn't feel good at the end of it. It felt full and yucky. Um, and to top it off, it's, it, it was such a contrast because I had actually intended to go to CrossFit that day, but I missed it by a half hour, just the way the timing worked out. So since I didn't get to go to CrossFit and it was too late, I was like, okay, well, I'll just take my son to dinner. <laughs> so I, we go to dinner and of course, you know, I ate all that. And then it's like, as I'm leaving, I'm thinking, ugh, I just feel so gross and yucky. And it's such a contrast. You know, when I go to CrossFit, I leave feeling fantastic. I feel strong and alive and vibrant. And um, it's just, it, it was so not worth it, you know? Um, and it just, it, it makes you realize like, it's, it's just not worth it. it. Just eating that for 20 minutes and then to have to feel like all crummy the rest of the night, it, it just, it wasn't, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a good trade off. So, so that happened. Um, Anyway, just things like that. Overall, I ate more, um, well, I'll talk about it in a minute, but I just ate more in general because I didn't have as many productive things to do as usual, like my work with HCG stuff, making, you know, obviously you saw I didn't have any videos out for a whole month, um, so I didn't have as much of that to do. So overall, I just, you know, eating out, we ate more, I got full more often. Um, so that was kind of, that was a negative. The third negative was that I was on antibiotics for two weeks. I haven't been on any antibiotics for quite some time. And even just in those two weeks, I noticed a perceptible difference in my, not only my digestion, but my cravings. I really um, was craving to eat more and to eat some sugary foods. Once I got off of the antibiotics, um, I had a couple of days of experiences where I was at Whole Foods and walking around and really having to will myself not to buy some gluten-free cookies or gluten-free cupcakes with icing or something like that. And you know, to be honest, I haven't had an experience like that in a long time. Since I don't eat sugar anymore, I don't, I don't crave stuff like that. I don't, I don't think that way. I just shop and get my healthy food and I have my little my, my little desserts, which involve like, you know, ice and protein powder and a fruit or two with some stevia, it's like really minimal. Um, and, and those make me happy. But I was, I had a really hard time. It was difficult. And I, like I said, I haven't experienced that in a while. So I think that the antibiotics did mess with, you know, the, the balance of my gut flora, um, which, you know, I'm fixing now it with um, probiotics and reducing my sugar intake even further. I don't eat regular sugar, but I do eat, you know, whole fruits and stuff. And I do eat carbs, usually like rice and stuff like that. So I had to take all of that out, um, which I'm getting ahead of myself. That was one of my corrective measures. But so that was a negative, just the antibiotics. And, you know, for any of you out there, if you're not aware of that antibiotics, they really can kill off the good bacteria. And it's not just that it affects your digestion. It can cause an overgrowth of candida, you know, yeast, and, and you can find yourself craving stuff again. And um, I find cravings very difficult to deal with. Um, and if you start having cravings every day, all day, for days on end, it's really only a matter of time before you give in to them. So, so that was another difficult thing. So the fourth negative was that I didn't have as many productive things to do. Um, I really find that uh, for me personally, I need to fill my brain. I need to either constantly be learning something or, um, or doing something that makes me feel productive, like a project where I have you know, an end result that I feel proud of. 
I, I need that type of, of thing. Um, and so when I go too long where I don't have enough productive things to do, I find myself eating more, you know? So I guess you could say I'm eating out of boredom because um, I'm kind of trying to fill, I'm lacking like enough stimulation to my brain. So I'm trying to like fill the emptiness with food. So I did kind of find myself doing that a little bit. Um, I had a lot, of, I had a lot more time with my son, uh, just because the way things were set up for that month, I, I had him full time again. I wasn't doing much work on any videos or articles or anything, and um, so we just, you know, just had a lot more downtime and a lot less brain stimulation. And uh, after a while, it was getting a little old and like, oh, you know, I'd, I'd really like to get back to doing some projects and um, so anyway I just I found that that made me eat a little more whereas you know when I'm home and I'm actively working on projects what you know I did go to CrossFit while I was there which was good uh, but you know here there's just nothing like being at home of course where you have your routine and the things that you do to be productive so when I have that here at my home um, I don't feel the need to eat as much. Um, for instance, today I spent all day writing articles and making videos for hcgchica.com and uh, I only, I had a couple bowls of soup today and that's it. And actually I am getting hungry now, so I'm gonna eat dinner after this video. But uh, the point is, is I didn't feel the need to eat all day. Whereas on a day when I don't really have anything that I have to do, I'll end up snacking a lot. And, and even if I get full, I'll be full, but I'll still keep reaching for more fruit or more, you know, some hummus and some more chicken and whatever. And I'm like, why am I still eating? I'm full. I don't feel good. My stomach feels bloated already, but I'll still keep eating. So that was another difficult thing. Just, you know, kind of not having enough to, to keep me stimulated. And the last thing was just that I had um, more emotionally upset days. I was doing a treatment uh, for Lyme disease, which is what I believe that I have. I don't have um, like lab testing to prove that, but that's what I believe that I have after all the research I've done. And the treatment itself, of course, I had a number of days of feeling pretty crappy as my body went through detoxification and stuff like that. And also just, you know, the emotional upset that occurs when you, when you don't know what's going on, you know, when you don't feel well, you wonder if you're ever going to get better or if you're getting worse or if the treatment's not working and you've gone to all this trouble. Um, there's just so many emotions that can go through your head when you're not feeling well in that regard. Um, and it, it can be really trying. And, and I, um, you know, even though overall over the past couple years, I feel that I've made really good strides um, in not using food as a comforter in general um, when I'm upset. Um, this was a pretty trying period and so I definitely, there were times when I felt very down that, um, that I, I did feel that desire to eat more. So, you know, that was just something that I still, you know, had to grapple with a little bit. The measures that I took to counterbalance those, you know, things that could have negatively impacted my weight uh, while I was gone, there was basically two that I implemented a little bit more frequently while I was gone than I do at home. So those two things are intermittent fasting and low carb eating. Um, in general, in day to day life, when I have my regular eating pattern, I find that I don't need to intermittent fast or eat low carb very often. It's, it's fairly rare that I have to do it. Um, but since I had, you know, these other things where it was a little bit over the top, um, to compensate, I did start doing a little more intermittent fasting again and some low carb days. Um, I'm going to post some links to intermittent fasting in the article that goes with this video. I don't want to go into all the details because there's tons of research on it showing how healthy it actually is. There's a lot of misunderstanding about fasting. Um, many previous articles have led us to believe that we have to eat five to six meals a day and that if you skip meals, you're starving yourself. And I don't want to get into all that, but basically in a nutshell, none of it's true. <laughs> um, and my experience has borne that out. I've been fasting on and off for the last couple years now. And I love, I love fasting actually. It makes me feel very clean. It makes me crave healthy food. Um, and it just, I actually have more energy. It, it feels really good. So, Anyway, so that's something I instituted. It's not something I did every day. I would do it, you know, maybe once or twice a week. 
following a day where I got way too full or something like that, I would just fast the following day until dinner time. And, and I always would eat dinner. I'm never not eating for an entire day. It's basically, you're just basically skipping breakfast and lunch. So you're, you know, say you have dinner at seven or eight or 9 p.m. Then I just wouldn't eat again until the following dinner, you know, like around seven or eight, something like that. So that's what I would do. So that was one way I kind of compensated. You're basically, when you do that, you're creating a calorie balance. It's like you eat more calories one day and then on another day you eat far less calories and then you have this overall balance. So I would do that. Um, towards the end, after I got off the antibiotics and I was feeling that craving and stuff like that, I instituted some low carb days. Um, because, and, and when I mean low carb, I mean super low, low carb. Um, no fruit, um, obviously no grain, no sugar, but I would even take fruits out. And for me, I find that that always takes my cravings away very quickly if I do that and if I eat high fat. I have to do both. I can't just take carbs out. I have to add fat, which for me is usually the form of like pork chops and bacon, and take out fruits and, and grain and, and sugar, which I already don't eat. So. I would do that and that would also, again, create a balance and it helped get my cravings back on track. Um, so that really helped with that. So those were the two things I added in. Um, now there are several things that I do already in my day-to-day -day life that help me maintain my weight just normally and that, that I'm sure helped while I was gone. So I wanna share those with you. Um, basically, I'll, I'll tell them to you all in a row first and then explain them. CrossFit one, obviously, cooked at home when I was able. Um, I don't eat breakfast in general, and I often don't eat until 2 p.m., and I eat heartily when I do eat. Um, additionally, I recently removed dairy, nuts, and corn from my diet, um, and that's in addition to gluten and sugar, which has already been out of my diet for a few years now. Um, last thing is there are certain boundaries I don't cross anymore. So I'm going to talk about those. So the first thing is um, CrossFit. CrossFit's just about everywhere now. Um, it's even in Ecuador and other countries. So I, <laughs> don't ask me why I was researching that. But um, anyway, when I went out of town, there's a CrossFit locator and I found one just 18 minutes from where we stayed. So I continued to go to CrossFit two to three times a week the entire stay. So I never went less you know, at all. So that was, you know, consistent. Um, I, we did cook at home when we were able to. We did eat out more, of course, but, you know, when I was able to, we definitely, I still tried to, you know, make kale salads, green beans. I tried to cook more vegetables when we were at home to compensate. Um, and I would, you know, cook less carby things, cook more green vegetables, things like that. So that was another thing that helped. And the next thing is that I don't eat breakfast in general. I don't think I've actually talked about this with you guys very much. Um, but yes, I don't eat breakfast almost ever. Um, I'm not hungry for breakfast. If you stop eating breakfast, you probably would feel hungry at first just because your body's used to having breakfast. So you'll have like that growling sensation. Um, but it would go away. It would go away. I, I did used to eat breakfast in times past. and um, But I haven't for quite some time now. So, I don't know if you guys have ever read articles and studies saying how um, people who eat breakfast um, maintain weight loss better or lose weight better or if people who don't eat breakfast gain weight are more likely to gain weight. Um, so I'm sure you've read about those. <laughs> so anyway, I found a couple links to a couple really great articles that um, have refuted these studies, I, basically the studies have been misconstrued for years and it's it's really not as people made it out to be. Um, which it makes sense now, to, <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you a little story. When I was in high school, I was over, I was a chubby 12 year old, just like most 12 year old girls, I was chubby. And I got in shape all on my own. I started doing this workout tape every single morning. I um, it's funny, I don't, I don't remember exactly how I chose my nutrition plan, I can't remember that far back, but, um, but I, I think I took out like all carbs and um, I just started eating less or something. And anyway, I think I stopped eating breakfast at that point. And I got thin, I got fit, I could hike 26 mile mountain um, with the guys in one day. So obviously I wasn't just like some weak starved thing. 
Um, and I remember reading those, you know, articles about how important breakfast was. And I remember thinking to myself the whole time while I'm this, you know, thin fit person, not having a problem maintaining my weight, I'm able to hike these mountains. And I'm worried all the time, like, oh, I better start eating breakfast soon or I'm going to gain weight. <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of funny, funny to me now because not eating breakfast was one of the things that actually you know, made my healthy outcome that made it possible for me to be as healthy as I was and to be fit and to be thin. Um, and it, it was working for me, but I was so afraid because of what I had read. Um, and that's what you'll see if you read the articles that I've linked to. It just shows how the studies were misconstrued um, and that actually overall people who don't eat breakfast do eat less calories overall. Um, because I don't know about you guys, but whether I eat breakfast or not, because some days I do, I will still eat just as much later. It, it's not like if I eat breakfast, I eat less throughout the rest of the day. Basically, when I eat breakfast, I'm just adding calories to the day. Maybe that's not true for all of you guys, but that, that's how it is for me. I've, I've, I can tell by the way that I eat. It doesn't make me eat less later. So anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. And I can tell you that long term, I think that that's been really helpful. So it's not that I'm against breakfast. I, I do have it on occasion. I'm not against it. It's just that I'm no longer in fear of it ruining my metabolism and my weight. I, I think that was that is not true. And, and my experience has borne that out. I have the best metabolism um, that I've probably ever had now and obviously partially due to CrossFit too, but um, I'm, I'm able to eat very comfortably amounts of food that I want without counting and without denying myself and um, and I maintain just fine or lose weight. So so definitely that hasn't hampered me and it's just nice to, to not feel like I have to, to do that all the time. So that has really helped me. Um, the next thing is actually I often don't eat until like 2 p.m. So the reason that this kind of came about is because I often go to CrossFit at noon. I like to work out fasted because I, I feel better. Um, I often, if I eat too close to CrossFit, I end up feeling really lethargic during the workout. So I just always eat fasted, meaning I haven't eaten yet for that day when I go to CrossFit. Um, sometimes I go in the morning, which if I do, I'll end up eating earlier in the day. But a lot of times I'll go at noon. I don't end up getting home until like 2 p.m. Um, or close to two. So by the time I have a meal ready to eat, it's it's like two o'clock and that's my first meal of the day. Um, I do this all the time. It feels perfectly fine. It doesn't hurt my energy. Um, to be honest, I feel best actually when I'm not eating. I tend to feel really lethargic when I do eat. <laughs> so, uh, so that's worked well for me. So again, it's just delaying it. And if you do more of that reading on intermittent fasting, um, you'll read some interesting stuff about um, the different hormones that get raised when you go um, a certain length of time without eating. And um, there's actually quite a few bodybuilder dudes out there who implement this kind of eating program where they fast basically 18 hours every day. And then they have like a six to eight hour feeding window um, where they only eat food in that six to eight hour window every day on a daily basis. So I don't necessarily purposefully do that, but sometimes that's how my schedule ends up being where I, I probably do eat you know, late at night, like however late I'm up, if it's till 10 or 11, I might snack on something and then I might not eat again, the, you know, till the following day at 2 p.m. and then I'll be eating between 2 and 10. So that's an eight hour feeding window. And that's worked fine for me. So the other thing that's really important to mention here, you know, after you hear me say that I don't eat breakfast and that I don't eat until 2 p.m. a lot, it's it probably starts to sound like I just don't eat much. And that's actually not true at all. Um, the next factor that I think helps me maintain my weight is that when I do eat, I eat heartily. So um, I don't do any restriction of calories when I am eating, whatever, whenever that is. So I, I don't count calories. Um, I don't count carbs. There are days when I do low carb, but I don't ever restrict like the amounts or the amount of fat or anything like that. So um, I'll, I'll eat whatever feels comfortable comfortable to me at that time. Uh, just to give you an example of that, I was going to tell you what I ate um, yesterday. 
my first meal of the day was after I came home from CrossFit, which was at 2 p.m., and I had a pork chop that I sauteed with all the fat on it and everything. I ate a whole pork chop and I had a huge mess of green beans with butter and salt and, and I ate that. Um, I often will eat a whole head of kale um, for my salad all in one sitting with some pine nuts. Um, I've been known to eat whole heads of cauliflower and whole heads of broccoli. Um, so I'm not just having like, you know, three bites of green beans. So I'm, I'm having a, a fairly good amount of what I'm eating. So I ate that around two. Then later I went to, I had to get my hair cut. So I went to a little sandwich shop nearby that I like that has a gluten-free bread. And I had a gluten-free sandwich, turkey club something or other. Um, I ate that probably around, I don't know, 4.30, 4.30, yeah, 4.30. And then I actually had another one later that night, like around nine, I had another gluten-free sandwich. And I had about like five little clementine, um, those little baby oranges, little clementines. I had five of those and I had like three persimmons. So I think that's mostly what I ate for the whole day yesterday. Oh, and I had a bowl of soup um, right before bed with some lamb in it and potato and carrot. So that was all between 2 and I think 11 or 12 p.m. So in that 9 or 10 hours, I had all of that. I don't know exactly how many calories that is, but I'm, I'm going to guess it was at least 2,500. It was a higher carb day than usual because of the gluten-free bread. I don't actually eat gluten-free bread very often. Uh, the only time I do is when I go to this sandwich shop as a treat because I, I really do like them, but I only have those maybe like once a week. So usually I wouldn't have that much rice bread um, or that many carbs, but as far as all the other stuff, those are normal things that I would eat. The vegetables, the higher fat meats, um, the fruit, I eat a good amount of fruit in general. Um, so that's what I ate, you know, and, and that feels totally fine for me. And I'm, I'm very happy with my current eating schedule. I think whatever you find um, that works for you, you you want to feel content with it. That's what you really want, right? You just, whatever way that you eat, you don't want to feel deprived in day-to-day -day life. So for me, I don't think, there's never a time when I think like, oh, I wish I could eat, but I can't right now. I never, I'm never thinking that. So the way I have everything laid out, time goes by and I eat when I want and then the other times it just flies by. So that was that. Mm, I'm losing my voice. This is my third video <laughs> that I've been recording today. So bear with me. <clears throat> We're getting close to the end. Um, the next factor that helps me is that I, I did recently remove dairy. I also removed nuts and corn. So I mostly want to mention how the removal of dairy affected me. Um, because it's, it's pretty dramatic. Uh, when I took dairy out, my weight initially went down fairly quickly, a, a good three to four pounds without changing anything else, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then ever since then, I think I haven't been using dairy for at least two months now, if not three, two to three months. It has been so easy for me to maintain my weight. Even though I've been doing that overall for the last year, it is significantly easier now. I mean, like I said, I've actually, I was maintaining between 127 and 129, and now I'm easily maintaining, I was maintaining 124 to 126, and now, recently, I've been 123 to 125, it's it's like it's been gradually going down, you know. Granted, I'm I'm eating very well and I'm crossfitting, and but it has never in my whole HCG journey and breaks and everything, it has never been this easy to maintain my weight as it is now um, since taking the dairy out. Again, I already go through the sugar and gluten, so of course that helps. But um, it, it's not that everyone should not eat dairy. You know, I I actually miss cheese. Out of everything, I miss cheese the most. Um, I already haven't been able to drink, um, actual milk in a long time. It just causes too much digestive upset for me, but, um, but I would still have things like, like cheese and yogurt, um, and I would eat quite a bit of it. Yeah, so I just can't believe how effortless it feels now to maintain my weight. It's great. I'm, I'm eating quite a bit of fruit. I eat rice. I eat other, you know, so I'm not low carb, but boy, ever since taking the dairy out, it's just been so easy. Um, I had a feeling that it was something that I should do because I, I did have digestive trouble from eating the dairy. 
Um, it's just that I kind of fought the idea of taking it out for a while until I was finally mentally ready to try it. So um, it might just be something worth trying out. Just give yourself a trial three to four weeks with no dairy and just see how your body responds and how you do. And then you can decide at the end of that whether or not to continue with it or not. Uh, so that was interesting. The last thing that I do in everyday life that really helped me just keep my weight balanced and not have to worry about it is that there are certain lines and boundaries when it comes to food that I no longer cross at all period um, I don't eat ice cream anymore period I don't eat cookies anymore period um, there is, I, I never never indulge in those um, not all of you may need to get as strict as I've had to get I had to do that because it was actually easier for me um, to eat healthy by just removing it entirely I find it a lot more difficult to actually keep small amounts of those things in. You guys have already probably heard me talk about this in other videos. But what this means is when I do overeat or, you know, do what I consider a little cheat, um, the food that I choose is invariably a much cleaner version um, than it would have been. So. The, any damage that might be done from eating too much of something um, is just, it, it's pretty negligible compared to what it would have been had I eaten something like ice cream. Um, what I, for instance, what I eat instead of ice cream now is I have my little smoothies. And even the smoothies themselves are not like tons of fruit. It's mostly like a lot of ice, um, a sprouted rice protein powder, stevia, and, you know, maybe one or two clementines. So still very, very low in sugar and carbs. Um, when it comes to baked good type stuff, I don't, I don't actually really eat anything like that anymore too often. On occasion, I'll indulge in some rice bread and toast that, but I try not to buy that too often because I do get carried away with it. <laughs> um, it's too easy to eat half a loaf of rice bread um, in a night, so I just don't buy that too often. But anyway, so the stuff that I do in place of my old cheat foods are just, they're just so much cleaner, they have much lower carb, sugar, calories even, that you can't do a whole lot of damage with it, um, and any damage that is done is, is very easy to correct. Um, whereas in the past, you know, when I would, you know, binge on something like um, ice cream, it, it was a huge amount of sugar and calories and fat in one sitting that I would consume. Um, and it would it'd be, it'd take a lot more work to correct that. So, so that's something that just creates a balance. And the thing is, is when you make these changes, um, you find that over time, you adjust so much to your new way of eating that you really don't have that deprived feeling. I, I know I already talked about that, but um, I just think that that's important to let you guys know. I just remember when I was starting HCG, I didn't, when I would read about people like no longer eating sugar or eating low carb, I, I didn't see how I could do that because I was addicted to sugar and I ate it every single day, multiple times a day. So like the idea of like never having it again um, was way too overwhelming. I thought, well, I would just feel horrible. There's no way I could have the self-control to do that. It would just be so hard every day, every single day of my life. Um, so, th but that's not what happens. Once you make those changes, your body stops craving those things and you get used to your new way of eating. Um, so for me, it's like when I want to have a treat, I just automatically think of making one of my little healthy smoothies or, um, or having some fruit or, you know, on occasion I even have a little dried fruit because it's, you know, extra sweet, it's kind of concentrated. So that's basically what I reach for when I want something sweet or I want to indulge. And I don't even give a second thought. I never even consider having any of those other things that I used to eat in uh, fairly vast quantities. So anyway, I hope I hope that was helpful. It was a very interesting experiment. I'm very pleased with the outcome. I, I'm happy that I that I didn't have to come home and <laughs> and make a video about you know making large needing to make large corrections. I did make my own corrections while on the trip, and it really is much easier to do that. Um, it kind of makes you feel like you're ahead of the game if you're actually able to make corrections while you're gone here and there um, and compensate by um, fasting or eating low carb at different points, then you can indulge. Because as you can see, 
despite the fact that I had all those different negative factors that could have played a role in affecting my weight in a negative way, they didn't end up causing that. They didn't end up causing that because I took those corrective measures. And so as it was, I was able to enjoy my Thai food eating out. And, you know, I didn't actually enjoy all those chips at the Mexican place, but um, but I did enjoy all my green curry at the Thai place um, and the steakhouse. Like that stuff, I did enjoy it. And, and it was okay. It worked with my body because of the other measures that I took to make sure that everything balanced out in the end. All right, that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys are well. You can find me on Facebook, HCG Chica, all one word. Um, my website, of course, hcgchica.com. All right, you guys have a good night. Take care. Bye. I haven't. No, no drums. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay.